from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Today, we're going trout fishing. Specifically, we're headed to Watonga Lake at the Roman Nose State Park. And we're going to catch up with two great fishing buddies, Charlie Roberts and Dean Berg, who love to trout fish at Watonga. We're also going to catch up with the pros right here at Bash Pro Shop and get some tackle tips for rigging up for wintertime trout fishing. We'll also catch up with John Stahl, our Northwest Region Fisheries Supervisor, to tell us about the trout stocking program there at Watonga. You know, some of this stuff nowadays looks good enough to eat. About 80 feet out there is, is the starting of a ledge and it starts getting deeper. And about 80 feet out there, there's some 17 foot water. And the deepest I've seen on the fish finder or depth finder is over about 50 yards off of that corner over there is 20, about 20, 21 feet. But seems like long in here, We've always done better just fishing right along in here. Now I've got a friend that fishes down there east of the of the general store and, and walks back up on one of the berms and they always catch fish. They're always about the same size as the ones I catch and we catch. Come on, John. Yeah. It's worth the time to come down here because uh, if I was at home I'd just be sitting at home watching television or something like that. Or working. Or, just, or, or doing something that my wife wants me to do that I'm trying to get out of. Right in here, most usually, is where we come and set up. What, for the last three or four years, about yeah. in here? Yeah. In here. But there's yeah. people fish all around. They go yeah. back up these necks and back off down here and over on the dam. We only got one boat corner, out here today. And uh, they catch. I think they catch fish all around, but this is just easier. Yeah. You don't have to walk as far, and we don't get hung up. And, and uh, if there's fish there, why? Then you don't have to go hunting for them. I've got six-pound line on. I use a slip weight with a bead, a swivel, and then I got about a two-foot or thirty-inch leader down under that. I have a salmon egg hook up about ten inches down. And clear on the bottom, I have a number 16 treble hook that we put power bait on. This is a salmon peach on the left and, and corn yellow on the right. Those are the two hot ones we've been catching them on here lately. Probably if you look, there's probably 150, 200 different colors. Rainbow's got what? five different colors in it? Yeah, four or five that they mix in there. And then you got a red, white, and blue. And you got a just a off color blue. They blend a lot of red and orange. Yeah, red and yellow. Take red and white, mix together and make pink. That works pretty good. Usually you buy it now, it's got the glitter. It's got glitter in it. But you can buy the plain, you can buy the, <clears throat> the plain dough bait that doesn't have glitter in it. You can go to Hobby Craft, get you a tube of glitter and put your own glitter in it. And I think that glitter helps a little bit. A little more of an attractant. No, he's playing with it. He just, he just not <laughs> wanting it. 
Get I got him. him. I got him. Uh, he's not a great big one, but I got him. He, a little one feels like he weighs three or four pounds sometimes. Salmon eggs. And I just do have You him. just did get him, did you? <laughs> Most usually when you feel one pull and they'll let up and they'll start again. And when they start again, that, that's when you want to set the hook. Or sometimes they bring it to you. Just, and when they bring it to you, you can never get the slack out of the line. And you just finally have to work until you get slack it out, slack out of the line and then, then you set the hook. If you jerk it too hard, you can break your line, but if they've swallowed it, you're probably not going to hurt anything if you do jerk it hard, but it's, yeah, I like to just set it easy. Keep your line tight. You don't want to give them any slack. You give them a little bit of slack line while they'll get off. And it's amazing that little bitty hook, sometimes just have one barb hook holding them, and uh, you'd think they'd get off, but they don't. Well, we're back now at Bass Pro Shops, and I've hooked Sean, the expert, to talk in a little bit more detail about how Charlie and Dean are rigging up today. Well, they're using a rig really, 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 really similar to the way this one here is set up. Uh -huh. uh, what we got here is floor carbon, floor carbon line, six pound test, yep. and they have a little swivel here with a slip sinker on it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you want a slip sinker is so whenever those fish pick up that bait and start to swim off with it, they won't feel that tension on that line and it'll give you more time to set the hook. Okay. Now they also have a bead between the sinker and the swivel. And what that does is it helps protect that knot right there so whenever that weight comes down and hits that, it won't hit that knot and break your line. Okay. Now off of the swivel, we have a salmon egg hook right here. Just about a, a six inch leader with a salmon egg hook on it. Now that salmon egg hook is good because it has a short shank on it and when you put the salmon egg on it it'll actually cover that entire hook okay so really not just any old little single hook is best i mean you want a, a specific salmon egg hook You're, the salmon egg hook is designed to use with salmon egg so none of the hook is exposed and you don't spook that okay. fish and you can get a better hook set with it that way okay now off of this leader again we have a line that's about 18 inches to two foot long it varies mm -hmm. And off of that line there, you have a treble hook, which what we put on that is power bait. Your dough power bait or the power bait balls, either one. Mm -hmm. What you do is you just put it in a little ball and then you just squish it around that hook. And that okay. power bait will float up off the bottom. And what that does is trout normally don't feed off the bottom. They normally feed mid-range foot or so off the bottom because okay. they're laying there and their eyes are on top of their head. Okay. So that power bait floating there will give them a better, better visual and they can actually see that bait to eat it. Okay. All and right. the, the size of weight we're using here is a 1 16th ounce weight and it depends if it's, if it's windier outside you want a heavier weight obviously. If you use a little bit more than an ultra light action rod, like a, just a regular light action rod, you want to use a little bit heavier weight just to help you cast. Okay, well that's all great information. I'm ready to go. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll be back with more right after this week's Outdoor News Report. Well, we're here at Lake Watonga in Romano State Park, 55 acre impoundment by the ODWC. Uh, it's been a wintertime trout fishery since 1987. And the truck just left, stocking quite a few nice looking fish. And 10% of the load by weight is 14 inches or greater in size. And uh, so there's a the possibility of catching a five pounder. Uh, so 
it's become a little bit more sporty in the fact that you could catch a real trophy trout here at Romano's. Sometimes when they just get off the truck, they'll bite at anything flashing like a Panther Martin spinner or a Super Duper. And we got anglers here working on this. And then we got uh, bait anglers using par bait and salmon eggs on over. And it's a beautiful bluebird day. Unfortunately, that's not real good trout angling. They kind of like ducks and geese. They kind of like it nasty. Whoa. But uh, I bet you we're going to see some fish caught here before very long. Trout season starts uh, first of November at where uh, Roman O's at Watonga, and about uh, nine, 1,900 trout are stocked each two weeks. Stockings come every two weeks, and uh, sometimes when they they've been on the truck from uh, Missouri since yesterday, so they spent a lot of time in the dark. So sometimes. As soon as they hit the daylight, they'll start in hitting on anything flashy and shiny. But a lot of the trout need to acclimate, get uh, feeling better after their truck ride from Missouri. So it takes about three days for them to get used to Watonga and start in setting up uh, territory where they like to roam and uh, feed. Uh, and uh, this trout season continues through the last of March here at Romano's. And a lot of the trout are captured. The good thing about hatchery trout is about 80 to 90 percent of them get caught. Uh, there are a few trout that actually are able to over summer in Watonga because of the big spring, but it's not enough to maintain the fisheries during the summer. But uh, lots of fish put in here, like I said, from the first of November through the last of March. Every two weeks a new load comes in. The trout program is a very popular program. Uh, the neat thing about it is it's a, what they call a user's program. Is you pay for your trout stamp and that's what purchases the fish. So it provides a lot of good winter recreation and great thing to get out in the dead of winter and catch mess trout. First time I come, he brought me down here. He caught six and I never had a fish. He told me, he said, we're not going home till you catch your limit, your six. He's getting a good nibble. He baited his pole, handed it to me, and within 45 minutes, we was on the way home. Yeah. The difference, yeah, getting a bite. Yes, sir. Difference, I had different, I had heavier line, didn't have this set up like he was set up, and, uh, after I went back home, well, I went to town and I bought me the ultralight rig like I needed. Makes a lot of difference. But, but they strip you a lot. They can suck that power bait off and them salmon eggs and you'll never know it a lot of times. If I, if I bait up and throw out and leave it lay there for 30 minutes and don't have any action, I'll usually bring it in and take the bait off and put some fresh bait on. It just kind of sets there and melts and that, the attractant in that dough bait will just kind of fade out. So it helps to have a little bit of fresh bait. Sometimes we come down here, get down here at daylight and you may not catch anything till seven, eight o'clock, nine, you know. And a lot of times I've showed up at nine o'clock, I'd had to come late, and there'd be somebody that was here since daylight, and they had, they'd have one fish, and then they hadn't caught anything for an hour or so. And I'd be here 10 minutes, and I'd catch one. And they'll, they'll quit, and they'll start biting. It may go an hour, you may catch four or five real quick, and then it may be an hour and a half or two hours before you get another bite. <laughs> or you might come down here and sit from daylight till noon before you catch anything. So it just, just kind of depends on the weather and if there's a front coming through. And if there's a little wind, it works better than it is now where the water, lake's real still. A little ripple on the water will help. Some days they bite, some days they don't. It's just like anything else. There's a lot of days that I'll come down here and I'll catch a limit and uh, I'll take them home, clean them, take them to somebody that's shut in. 
I don't even I don't even keep them a lot of times. But there's there's people that like fish that that's not able to come down. We'll take them. I'll take them home, clean them, take them in, and give them to them. They've been the last this year and last year they started putting bigger trout in. We've We've caught a lot bigger trout the last two years here. Well, I'm, I got plenty of twist on But right now, the biggest thing right now, the water is too calm. You need a ripple on the water. If you come out here when it's sprinkling, I guess they think it's bugs. They'll be hitting right and left, won't they, Charlie? If it's cloudy, they seem to bite a little better, too. Real bright sun. And uh, the wind kind of, if it puts a ripple on the water, it kind of breaks up them sun rays. And I think it makes the fish move a little bit more. I've been out here when it was snowing and you still catch fish. When, we came uh, down here one morning and it was, wasn't snowing when we left home. We got down here, it was snowing and we pulled up here and set up and started fishing. And there was a fella fishing over there on that island out there. He had an ultra light rod and he'd caught three or four. Pretty soon I looked over there and his rod was bowed pretty good. I said, you need any help? He said, well, I could use a net. So I went over there and he had a six pounder dipped up out there. And it was, I mean, it just snowing to beat the band. He was a little tougher than I was. He was standing out there. I was over here by the, where it's warm. We have or, sat, we have sat in the pickup. <laughs> people were standing around catching fish. Fell and his little boy was over there. They were bait fishing. And his little boy told his dad, he said, I'm tired of this bait. He said, I want a spinner. So he put a spinner on, put him a red rooster tail, a little, little bitty one. Pretty soon he was catching trout. And it wasn't 15 minutes, there was 10 guys, anywhere from 70 to 50 over there standing beside that little kid with their spinners, dragging them fish out. That little kid hadn't done that, why? Nobody would have known what to do. Can't catch up with him. You bringing her to you? Yeah. Bringing it to me. He's bringing it to me. I can't catch up with him. I got him. And trout will pick the bait up and come to you, come to the bank. Yeah. Do you need the net or your cap? Uh, yeah, well, uh, He's better than. Okay. He got the power bait earlier. He hit the salmon eggs. He's just inside the mouth and just. Not, he's not deep hooked at all. He's just just inside the lip. That's the way you like to catch them. They're easy to get off. You're gonna have to work to beat this one. I'm out there now. You're gonna have to work to beat this one. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna get one Whether that's you like a it lot or not. bigger than yours. Whether you like it or not. Well, we'll wait and see when the day's over who's got the biggest fish. Well, it don't matter. <laughs> it's still better than being home doing mama, mama's honeydews. Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Better than going to work and punching the clock? Yeah, don't, I have done that for quite a while, but anyway. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it for be a year better. and a half, but I like it. Yeah, we'll come back. We'll, Just, be, we'll be down here more than once. It ain't dark yet. No. Well, I know that Dean and Charlie had a great time fishing today, and I hope that maybe you picked up a tip or two yourself. You know, there's plenty of wintertime trout fishing opportunities right here in Oklahoma. You'll find all the information and the season dates in the Oklahoma Fishing Guide. Also be aware that we also have two year-round fisheries for trout fishing. That's the Lower Mountain Fork and the Lower Illinois River. Now, John Stahl mentioned the trout stocking issue and how Fish feed more aggressively many times right after they've been stocked. You can actually log on to our website at wildlifedepartment.com for the trout stocking schedule for every area across the state. We hope you have a great time in the outdoors this winter. 
for all of us at your wildlife department. Thanks for watching. I'm Todd Craighead saying we'll see you somewhere near next time on Outdoor Oklahoma. Now, I just have one last decision to make, pink or purple? <laughs>